The song I will sing this morning is I Come to the Garden Alone. Amen. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my
different plants that uh, he made possible for us to be here today, where we can, where we can share in the sweet fellowship. Praise the Lord. And you know, I'm grateful to God, you know, that he woke me up this morning, clothed me in my right mind, and he set me upon my way this morning. Praise the Lord. You know, I saw someone walking on the road, you could see there were others in mind, but I thank God, you know, I could have been like that in that situation. But I thank God he's given me focus this morning. And you know, the one thing I can focus on is Jesus. Praise the Lord. Once I focus on him, he would lead me through and guide me through each day. You know, we just sang, better days are coming. Praise the Lord. But the thing is, where are we now? Are we striving to enter into those better days? And you know, I look at my, I ask myself, where am I today with God? Praise the Lord. You know, I might feel I'm over there, but I, it might just be 99.99%. It's not enough. God needs 100% commitment from me. Praise the Lord. So I'm asking God that I'll be able to sing that song, I surrender all to Him. Amen. That's my aim, that's my goal. My desire is to surrender all Amen. and to give Him my all. Praise the Lord. I thank you for the past week. Um, it was a week of ups and downs, uh, emotional roller coaster. Sometimes you're up there, sometimes you're down there. Amen. Praise the Lord. But through it all, Amen. I've learned to trust in Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And through it all, He guided me through. Praise the Lord. Uh, you know, um, thank God. He really, I kind saw the working of God this week. Praise Amen. the Lord. And God revealed Himself to me. Praise Amen. the Lord. And I'm forever eternally grateful unto God. You know, and He's brought me thus far. I can't let go now. I can't drop off by the wayside. You know, I just want to keep on trusting Him, yes. keep fighting a good fight, running the race, and yes. not giving up. Praise the name of the Lord. I don't want to look back and think, well, gosh, look where I was. You know, never to look, look to lost my should look back. She turned to a pillow. So, praise the name of the Lord. And what I'm focusing on now is to look forward, focus on God. Follow him, he's gone ahead, prepare the way. So I'm just going to follow him. And I want him to be that cloud that, that by day just be done guiding me by day and pit of fire by night. Praise the name of the Lord. So um, I just want to give God praise and thanks and to encourage you. Um, it might seem as though um, nothing is happening. Maybe you, the situation in your life is stagnant, nothing is moving. But remember, God is on, God is doing the work for you. He's doing the background work for you. It might be your time, but it's God's time. God knows when to bless you, how much to bless you with, Amen. and at right appointed time. Praise Amen. the Lord. So all you've got to do is remain wait patiently. And if we know what happened when we might, our strength be renewed. And we live to lift up our wings yeah. and fly as he goes. Yeah. Praise yeah. the Lord. So I just want to encourage you today. Remember Job, what happened to him? He lost everything. You know, he was you know, being discouraged, but what he did, he kept his righteous integrity. Yeah. So I'm asking God to help me. Well, to keep my righteous integrity during yeah. tough times. Yeah. It might be tough, it might be sometimes I'd be happy, sometimes I might be sad, but I just want to keep and maintain my righteous integrity and I know you will see me through. So that's my encouragement for you today. Keep holding on. Keep trusting. It might look bad, but remember, better is on before. So these are my words to you in Jesus' name.
Where did Caesar defend the Caesars? Where did you ask about that? What for a pastor? A pastor with a big heart. Get the pastor squatted behind me.
they made a mistake. The enemy will always make a mistake. The enemy cannot work with God, but God cannot work the enemy. They got to Canaan safely because God never gave them up. And God will never give you up. God kept his promise because God is a promise keeper. He keeps his promise. He says he'll never leave you, not to save you. Have you ever wondered when you're crossing a river and you can't get through?
glorify the Lord. I love to magnify the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus. The word said the Lord inhabited the praises of Israel, his people. And the prophetic is deep in my heart, very deep in my heart. I got the love of God very deep in my heart. Praise the Lord Jesus. For those of you who have internet and are familiar with the internet, you know that you can go anywhere you want on the planet. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But, hallelujah. But I think of God looking down on Father Abraham when he was calling and zoomed out in his heart and saw the love of God very deep in his heart. Praise the Lord Jesus. That's why God called him. Praise the Lord Jesus. I would like to be the household of faith in the wonderful <coughs> name of Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. Thank God to give God thanks for our pastor, our daddy of this church. Let us know. That he left a message us today, worshiping. And our visiting friend, my nephew, is here with us as well. Jesus. Praise God. One word tells us that the wages of sin is, is 
debt for the gift of God is eternal life. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. So we serve a righteous God and He will never be righteous. Praise the Lord Jesus. Now, um, the Bible tells me in Genesis 13, verse 13, Genesis 13, verse 13, God looked down in Sodom and Gomorrah. And it says, The men of Sodom and Gomorrah of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. I don't know if you remind you what we what we see today. Wickedness exceedingly. If we don't know what's happening to the world today, wickedness is exceeding wickedness. Praise the name of Jesus. And because God cannot tolerate wickedness, God said, I'm going to do something. And he looked down in Sodom. And he said, Lot, he took Abraham, I'm going to destroy the city. And he saw Lot and his family was righteous. Someone said, praise the name of the Lord Jesus. And he told them, he's going to rain fire. Told Abraham and brimstone upon that king, upon that country. So our Lord, he, he tolerates it to an extent. Yes. But when the time comes, he puts his foot down. Praise the Lord Jesus. And we see, you know, that people are saying, that the church is going to go to the rapture. And you know, when Jesus stood upon the Mount of Olive, the disciples said, Tell us what shall be the sign of, the co of that coming and the end of the world. And Jesus says, Take heed that no man deceive you, for false weak for prophets shall rise up. And I heard it saying that the church will go to the rapture. But if God had wind, brimstone, and fire upon Sodom and Gomorrah with Lot and the righteous men there, we would accept that. That we would go through the tribulation. But God took Lot and his family out before he rained the fire and brimstone. Praise the Lord Jesus. Genesis 18, 20 said, the Lord said, because of the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous. And verse 24 said, the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, brimstone and fire out of heaven. Praise the Lord Jesus. So the sin was very grievous. <coughs> And God could not tolerate it. So God did something. Yes. And he took Lot and his family out. His wife was told, he was told no, not to look back. But she looked back and she became a pillar of salt. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So we see God don't tolerate sin. No. Sin can't enter there. No. Praise the name of Jesus. The city is a city so bright and clear. Sin cannot enter there. At the same time, at another time, we see the wickedness in the days of Noah was exceedingly wicked. And God told Noah, build me an ark. And Noah built that ark. And as he drive every nail in the ark, he said, repent. You know something, I'm thinking of what we are today now and as we see the things you are today and this church is here. And I think if half the people on this road came into this church, this church would be full. Yes. Praise the name of Jesus. But so it was in the days of when of Noah, and Jesus says, as it was, yes, so in the days of Noah, so shall it be. Now, Pastor Scott now become the Noah of these days. Mm -hmm.
because God tell him to tell people he's coming soon. Yeah. <coughs> and people might laugh and say, we've been here this year after year. And we see nothing happening. But so when Noah was preaching for 120 years, they didn't know when the rain was going to come. Noah himself didn't know when the rain is going to come, but he knew when it's going to come. And so he built the ark to save him of his, his, his family. And when they went inside the ark, God himself put in the key and locked the door. And when the door locked, it was well locked. It doesn't matter who came, small, great. It could be the Prime Minister. Praise the Lord. It could be the King and the Queen. God locked the door. Praise the Lord. And the way begin to fall. We are saying that Jesus is going to come again. Mm -hmm. In the days of Noah, they said, how can this man build an ark to save that dry land? Mm -hmm. Who? There's no rain. Mm -hmm. There's no water on us. But the man did not have a mm -hmm. But we are in time now that we say that Jesus is coming soon. It, we are living in a very serious time, Richmond. Yes. A very serious time. <coughs> and I can't understand why when you preach to people, it's like they don't, they hear and they don't hear. It goes in one ear, it goes to another. We are saying that Jesus is coming soon. And we are saying that this world is going to get red hot. Yeah, Hallelujah. When the time of Noah, God set a rainbow after he 40 days he opened the windows of the ark, there was a rainbow, a sign and God said, I will no longer destroy thy water. Praise the Lord Jesus. But he did thy fire. And I can't understand when you tell people that Jesus is coming soon. People just that don't hear. Don't understand, they don't accept it. We are living in the, in the last days. We are living in the last days. In Jonah 1, verse 1, the word says that now the word of God came unto jo Jonah. Jonah was the one, Nineveh, that something was going to happen because the city of Nineveh was wicked. Wickedness. Anytime where there's wickedness, God set his face against wickedness. Yeah. Praise the Lord Jesus. And God wanted to destroy Nineveh. And God said to Jonah, go unto Nineveh and cry against the city because of the wickedness. And Jonah went the other way. Jonah took a ship Praise the Lord. Jonah went to Tarshish. He flee from the presence of God. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. But you know, if God sent you to do something, do it. Don't hesitate. Do it. Praise the Lord. Because he went into the ship. While he was in the ship, the storm began to walk and roll. The ship began to the waves begin to roll the ship. And the men knew something was wrong. And Noah was down in the base, the bottom sleeping. And they had their feeling was something to do with him. So they're waking. Why sleepest thou? Tell us where you're from. Who is your God? Who are you? And who are you? And so when Jonah explained who he was, they were fearful. Because God said he should to go to Nineveh and cry Amen. against the city Amen. because of the wickedness. Amen. Praise the Lord. And when he realized, he said, throw me overboard. Amen. And they throw him overboard. And everything was still. Amen. You see, when I've got something for us to do it, 
do it. And then he was in the whale, the, a whale swallowed him. And he was in the belly of the whale for three days. Yes. You wonder how can a man be in the whale of a belly for three days and three nights? How does he breathe? How does he, you know, how does he live? But God miraculously keep him in the belly of the whale. Until he came to realize himself. And he said, Lord, I will do. And God let the whale spit him out. Praise the Lord Jesus. And he went up against Nineveh. The, the, the journey that would normally take three days. Take him one day. And he got into Nineveh and said, Yet, five days, and Nineveh shall be destroyed. And the people, everybody goes down in fasting and prayer. That's a repentant heart, you know. You know something? A repentant heart is a gift from God. Yeah. It's good when your heart can repent. Yeah. Some people heart can't repent. Yeah. It doesn't matter what you say to them, their heart, heart, yeah. their heart, their, their heart can be as hard as a rock. Yeah. No matter what you say, you push that part. Them hard work. But when you can repent, and God give you a heart to, to be so, to, to understand and to accept. That's why God loved David, you know, he knows the king of Israel. David fell into iniquity, but he confessed himself. Yeah. That's the thing about it, we need a heart to confess. And David had the love of God, Amen. deep down in his heart. Yeah. And that's why God called him. We, don't, we need to have the love of God deep down in our heart. Amen. The love of God will make us. So, 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 you know, submit, you know, submissive to him, Amen. the love of God. Without the love of God, we're nothing. nothing. You know, that's why uh, God was talking about Pharaoh and Egypt, and how God delivered the children of Egypt out of the land of bondage, and what, how God built this in a marvelous way. Pharaoh would not repent. And Moses went to Pharaoh, how much time? Say, go. The Lord says, let my people go. Or I will go and play upon the land. Who is this God? He says, I don't know this God. So they came upon the land, the frogs, the river turned into blood. I, I don't know if some of you know that we're right now around the world, the rivers, rivers are turning into blood. Many of you don't know that, but some of you may research that. But rivers are turning into blood all over the world. There are earthquakes all over the world. There are um, what do you call it? Um, hurricanes, all sorts of things happening all over the world. Volcanoes are erupting in many of the nearest places. So many things are happening. But you know what I'm saying? Pharaoh, even though he saw the signs of the frogs, the river turned into blood, and the plagues and the flies and everything, his heart was hardened. And because his heart was hardened, you know what that do? Make it harder still. That's why the Bible said, he that is filthy, let him be filthy still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. Praise the Lord Jesus. Because he did not accept, the Bible says, he did not believe the truth. God himself will bring upon you the illusion that you believe a lie. If you do not believe the truth and you insist the truth, God will bring upon us strong delusion. And we won't believe the truth anymore. We will believe a lie. Praise the Lord Jesus. But when God showed a sign to Pharaoh, and Pharaoh would not let the people go, God said, All right, one more sign. God give us chances. God give Pharaoh chances. He said, One more time. I will slay the firstborn of everyone in Egypt. And tell the children of Israel. You know, God loves us, you know. God is going to protect us, brethren. Mm -hmm. God is going to protect his people because God knows his people. Amen. He said, tell the children of Israel to put the mark no. <coughs> over, the, over the lintel. And when the destroying angel come, <coughs> we'll pass that house. Pass we'll pass over that house. <coughs> God have a mark on every one of his children. Amen. The Bible tells us, Pastor, that nevertheless the foundation of God standeth sure. Amen. Having the seal, the Lord knows them that are His. Amen. And don't be mistaken, the devil knows. Yes. The devil
heaven knows those that are his. Yes. Yes. That's why he fight the children of God, because they know you belong to God, know you belong to God. Yes. So he leave his them one side because they are mine already. Mine already. Mm -hmm. well, what are you trouble them for? Mm -hmm. Just leave them and stay in them sin. But you, you who say you're professing Jesus, <laughs> you who say you're praying to Jesus, uh, I have something for you. Mm. Praise the Lord Jesus. But our God is greater. Mm. The Bible says, greater is he that is in you. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. We know we're more than conquerors. Mm. We are more than conquerors. Yes. Peter, 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 2, verse 9, it says, Ye 